All right, so I just got off of work, and uh, yesterday we had a ton of rain come through, and we got a ton of rain coming tomorrow. So the river that runs through the middle of town is like flood stage, like crazy high, like it's ripping. And so I figured it'd be a good time to go get some drone footage of it. I don't know, kind of cool, something to shoot, you know? Um, and while we do it, I figured it'd be a good time to kind of talk about the difference between the Pocket 3 and the Action 4. There he is, look. You see him? Another one. So while we're doing this, I figured it'd be a good time to kind of talk about the difference between the Pocket 3 and the Action 4. What's the pros and cons of each one? Which one might be better for you, uh, depending on your scenario? I know which one's my favorite and which one's my go-to, but it might not be the same for someone else. So they both have strings, they both have weaknesses, and we're gonna go over them together. All right, so we're gonna do this real world vlog style. Pocket three in the right hand, action four in the left. Both of them have about 65% battery, so we should be able to get this done. So both cameras are in standard color profile. They both do uh, D-Log M. I'm not much of a colorist, so I try not to color grade if I don't have to. The Pocket 3 shoots with also uh, what they call hybrid log gamma. That and uh, D log M are both 10 bit. If you're doing standard picture profile, then you're just gonna be in 8 bit. Um, so you pretty much have H264 and H265. Anything in H264 is gonna be 8 bit. Just looking at the two small screens, I can see that the Pocket 3 exposes for my face a lot more properly and is probably about a stop overexposed. Hey. The Pocket 3 definitely looks a lot more natural. Plus, it's got true face detect autofocus. If you can see behind me, that's actual real uh, background blur. That's not digitally enhanced or anything. And with the Action 4, you have a, a fixed focus. I mean, it is an action cam, and it performs like an action cam. They, bo they both do a lot of the same things. They both have a lot of the same features. But the Pocket 3 pretty much is going to outperform the Action 4 in a lot of ways. Uh, both have incredible image stabilization, but do it in completely different ways. So the Pocket 3 has the three axis gimbal and the Action 4 is going to be cropped in just a little bit with electronic stabilization. And then on top of that, you have completely different focal lengths. I find that the Pocket 3 with its 20 millimeter full frame equivalent is just a lot more usable, uh, especially in like indoor situations, studio situations. I have no problem using this in my studio, but the Action 4 is just too wide for what space that I have. That's cool. Yeah, it's definitely a little overexposed. Or either the Pocket or the Action 4 is underexposed. I don't know. I absolutely love this little path, though. It's so pretty through here. They've really done a lot of work down here. It looks so nice. Gazebos, swings, and stuff like that. This used to be actually kind of a crappy part of town, but they're doing a lot with it. They've added a little farmer's market down here. They have a little community meetup. Um, every Thursday, farmer's market. Man, that river is ripping, y'all.
as you can see they both stabilized really really well you can see me bouncing in the frame and now I'm gonna turn these around so you can Dang, it is ripping, y'all. So this river, fun little fact that y'all don't care to know. There's a snail. Let me fold these tripods up. Well, I'll hold them. There's, this river is at least national class, if not world class rapids. And they have tons of competitions here very nice place and the minimum flow on this river is 1996 cubic feet per second they found a, a rare snail called the tulatoma snail that requires that cfm to thrive it just so happens that that cfm is optimal white water conditions on this river so the minimum flow is uh, you know, 1,996 cubic feet per second. That's one unit at the dam. And right now, I guarantee you, it is all flood gauges, floodgates wide open. This is probably, let me flip it around. This is probably 40,000 cubic feet per second. It doesn't look like it's moving that fast right here, but I guarantee you it's ripping. Let's see if I can get over here, you can see it. So the Pocket 3 has a one inch sensor, so they claim. I don't know how to prove that it is or isn't, but they, it's a one inch sensor. You know, we're going to fly from right here. I was thinking about flying from down there, but we're going to take off from right here. I can set my cameras up. Bust out the old Mini 3 Pro. We got a ND32PL on there now from Freewell. That's another big benefit of the Pocket 3 is with its phase detect autofocus, it has something that's called product showcase. So if you were to hold something up to the camera, it will focus on it and then go back to you talking. So it's perfect for tech reviewers or anybody working in a studio doing talk ahead stuff like this that's reviewing products or needing to change focus all the time. With the Action 4, it's a fixed focus and you know, the minimum focus is probably about where I'm at now. I think it's about 30 inches, if that. So I might even be out of focus right now. So you can see as I get closer, that does not do any better. But if I were to hold this up, it changes. Whoa, it's angry or something.
such an idiot, man. I was so concerned with filming this video that uh, I, I left my keys and my ignition in my car. It really isn't that big of a deal. I mean, it's a nice car, but it's not. I mean, people are looking to steal it. See, that's the that's the bonus side to having all this camera gear is that you'll never really have a super nice car to worry about people breaking into it. I mean, obviously with a bigger sensor, you know, the Pocket 3's got the one inch and then the Action 4 has the one over 1 1.3, which is significantly smaller than the one inch. You can just see the difference walking through this shady trail with dynamic range and exposing for the face, exposing for the highlights. So the Pocket 3 is going to be geared more towards someone who's into more cinema style filming, uh, even studio work, where the Action 4 is, you know, it's an action cam. It's meant to mount to the top of a helmet or the handlebars of your bike or even to your chest when you're, uh, you know, flying down a mountain on a snowboard. And the Pocket 3 is wearable. It has a wearable mode. And I kind of prefer it whenever I wear my neck strap. I would show you, but I got both hands full right now. Um, when I'm doing photo shoots, I like to wear a camera to show what my, my big camera's doing. And so with the Pocket 3, when I have it on my neck strap, when I lean down, it kind of angles with me and still shows the back of my camera versus the Action 4. Whenever I lean down, it's just pointing directly at the ground. I thought the neck strap would have helped with that, but it didn't really do a whole lot. So it does have a wearable mode, which is uh, basically putting it in FPV. But you can see where I put both cameras on a suction cup mount and put them on the hood of my car. Uh, the Pocket 3 did not like that at all. It got real super jittery. as where the Action 4 just it loved it. You know, it just soaked up every bit of it both cameras can record up to 4k 120 but the action 4 can do it with audio whereas the pocket 3 it's just in slow-mo which makes sense because it is an action camera so if you're wanting to film in 120 frames per second and get that high speed shot and you need the audio with it you're not going to be going up and down a half pipe with a pocket 3 like you would uh, the action 4. so both cameras are capable of doing more than just video. Like I said earlier, they both go to 4K 120, but they both also uh, take extremely acceptable photos. Even the profile photo for this channel was taken with the Action 4. Now that sun's going away, you can really see the difference. So one thing that the Pocket 3 does that I, I never really anticipated using as much as I do, but I use it all the time, they both do time-lapse and hyperlapse, but since the Pocket 3 is on a three-axis gimbal, it does something called motion-lapse, where the gimbal will rotate left to right or right to left while doing a time-lapse or hyperlapse. It's a really cool feature, and it, it just really generates some stunning images. Like doing it on like a, at night on a bridge with the cars passing by, or I, I use it all the time just working in the yard or, you know, uh, unboxings. It's just a really neat feature that uh, I use all the time.
Yeah, the pocket three just overexposes. I'm just gonna have to start doing. Here, I'll tell you what. I'll do it now. Let's try this. Let's take that EV down to minus one. Oh, that looks so much better, y'all. How do we think? Is that a little better? That's minus one EV and then just zero EV on the action four. Oh, that looks so much better. All right. Had to go back to the car and get the keys out of the ignition and lock it up a little tighter. And while I was there, I went ahead and charged up the Pocket 3 for a little bit. It charged incredibly fast. About 10 minutes took me up to 70%. But that is definitely one positive about the Action 4 is that the fact that you can replace the battery. So when the Pocket 3 battery is gone for good, you just have to replace the camera. With the Action 4, I just pulled out another battery, swapped them out, and I'm off to recording again. They both charge incredibly quick. Uh, both of them reaching 80% in around, you know, 20 minutes or so, which is impressive. And then they, they both get about an hour of 4K recording with uh, with the Rocksteady Plus on the Action 4 and then with the 3-axis gimbal on the Pocket 3. And while we're talking about the negatives, the Pocket 3 has absolutely no IP rating or certification whatsoever. And the Action 4, I've literally tied a rope to it and thrown it into the lake and recorded 4K 120 of some fish below a pier. So we're walking through this trail that's a lot of shadows, a lot of in and out of the sun. And with the one inch sensor on the Pocket 3, I just see that that's holding up incredibly well. So how's that Action 4 doing? You know, with the one over 1.3 inch sensor, which is a massive sensor for an action camera, incredibly impressive low light performance for what it is but with that electronic image stabilization it will start to suffer in low light it just requires a lot of light for that stabilization whereas the pocket 3 can use that processing power for image retention Tell you what, with that sun being there, how's these, how do these do backlit? Yeah, look at the difference in that. Yeah, huge difference. They both look really, really good. The Pocket 3 still looks a little bit overexposed. Let's turn around and see. Yeah. So who do I think they're for? So the Pocket 3 is really geared more for like a vlog setup or even studio work. I mean, it could probably replace most people's main camera for a lot of situations. You got phase detect autofocus, the product showcase, three axis gimbal. I mean, the stabilization is great. Whereas the Action 4 is just that, it's an action camera. So if you do a lot of mountain biking or hiking or <laughs> gonna be in the rain ever at all it's really probably your best choice so if you do a lot of more cinematic work need smooth footage a lot of background blur the pocket 3 really is the way to go or if you're just a tech reviewer and you do a lot of product showcasing and you're gonna be holding a lot of things up to the camera then for sure the pocket 3 is gonna be the way to go but if you're more adventurous and you're gonna be doing a lot of hiking mountain biking snowboarding on a boat, then the Action 4 is probably meant more for you. So base prices on the Action 4 is gonna be $399, whereas the Pocket 3 is $519, and you really get a lot for that extra $120. Now both of them come with accessory combos and the prices increase significantly so you can get the creator combo with the Pocket 3, which comes with the DJI mic, which does work on both of these uh, via the most recent firmware update on the Action 4. It's now compatible with the DJI, DJI mic 2, which I could have swore would have been released by now, but I don't know what they're waiting on. I was thinking with CES this week they would have announced it, but not yet.
Now the Action 4 comes with the Adventure Combo, which gets you two extra batteries, the charging hub. Uh, I believe that's maybe the 459 for that combo. And then they got the mountain bike combo and skiing combo. I mean, there's so many different ones for the Action 4. Now, I bought the Pocket 3 with anticipation that the DJI mic would be released as a set shortly after, but it hasn't been released uh, with, with no release date in sight. So I probably should have went ahead and got that creator combo, but it's okay. The internal audio is fantastic on both of these cameras. But like I said, we are recording externally to the DJI mic, just in case we need a backup. Yeah, see, now we're really starting to see the difference. I thought I was going to sneak over there and get a cup of coffee, but they close in like five minutes. I've been off sugar all this year and really haven't felt much better in my life. I mean, like I sleep better, I get up better. Like it, I've, I've felt really great, but I've cut out, well, I've cut out like lattes. I'll say that I hadn't cut out coffee, but I've cut out like the fancy coffees. So not only is my brain, my body felt better, but my wallet has been significantly thicker too. So I'll leave affiliate links to both of these products in the description below. So if you think you might want to pick one up, uh, if you want to grab one through those links, it does support the channel directly. I'll also leave links to both the full reviews of the Pocket 3 and the Action 4. So if you want to do a little bit deeper dive into it, this is this really wasn't meant to be a comparison, just kind of showcasing both the feet, both the highlights and the features of both of these cameras and I had a few comments that were asking, you know, which one should you get? And if you got the budget, I think the Pocket 3 is definitely the better camera. I think you get a lot more with your money, but if you're going to be doing a lot more adventurous stuff or even anywhere near water, you might want to consider the Action 4. The Action 4 is a highly capable camera that has yet to let me down. Not like the Action 3 did. Yeah, let me just give you an idea of what the difference in these focal lengths is. So we are side by side. Both cameras are side by side. That just goes to show you how much wider the Action 4 is. Yep, they both are incredibly capable cameras with incredible battery life. The footage looks good. They can both shoot log profiles. For those of you who like the color grade, the audio is extremely capable coming directly out of both cameras. So one thing that the Pocket 3 does that the Action 4 wishes it could do is Active Track 6.0. I absolutely love this feature, especially with me being just a one-man band, doing all this recording by myself. Every now and then I have help from Lauren, but for the most part, I do all this by myself and I can do a lot of talking and walking and stepping away from the camera I don't always have to be right up on it and it will just keep me right in the middle of the frame which is a huge plus that you just don't get with the Action 4. I love the Action 4 I keep it with me everywhere I go I use it all the time but the Pocket 3 really has become my favorite camera and could easily replace everything in my bag maybe not everything but it, it's just an incredible camera and I have no problem recommending it to anyone. Now, whether you need that creator combo, that's completely up to you. It does come with the DJI Mic 2, which is compatible with both of these cameras. And it comes with a few creative filters, uh, I think the wide angle filter, but Freewell does make those. And I typically use the CPL on the Pocket 3. Every time I use it, it just does a lot for the highlights. But in order to keep this a fair comparison, I don't have a CPL for the Action 4, so in order to keep this a fair comparison, uh, I didn't use it on this one. But I typically keep it with me at all times. Here, I'll even show you.
So this is the case for the Pocket 4. Or I mean, so this is the case for the Pocket 3, and I have I keep the Freewell CPL in there. Let me wipe the dust off of it. You see that just clips on like that. It just adds a little more saturation and contrast and helps with the highlights on faces. And then I also keep a ND8 that's also polarized in there. Let's see. I've been a long time user of Freewell products. I bought them for every DJI camera that I've owned except for the Action 4. I bought them for the Action 3. I ended up not using them very often. And so I just said, you know what? I'm not going to do it with the Action 4. The HDR capabilities are incredible. Uh, the dynamic range is good. I mean, it really is a huge sensor for such a small, compact little action camera. All right, well, that's going to do it for this one. I appreciate y'all stopping by. Don't forget to hit that like button if you found this at all helpful. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. As always, take care of yourselves. You know you deserve it. I'm Donnie B, and we'll see you on the next one. Peace.